If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. We're going to go ahead and draw a picture of the two point charges that are initially separated by 33 centimeters. So initially we have the two charges separated by 0.33 meters. Notice we converted 33 centimeters into meters. And then this charge is going to be released and it's going to basically be repelled away from the other charge. And by the time it gets 1.7 meters away, it's moving with a speed of 70 meters per second. And our job is to find the charge Q, which is present on both charges. Note that they both have the same charge of positive Q. Now, initially what we wanna understand is that there is electrical potential energy between these two charges because they're both positively charged it's basically like a spring if you will that has been compressed and it's ready to sort of release and shoot one of the charges off to the right hand side but for the moment this charge is being held in place and so there's this electrical potential energy that's sort of just waiting to be released and we can calculate the electrical potential energy using the following equation and so here is the equation for electrical potential energy, which is symbolized sometimes by the letter U. We have a constant multiplied by the two charges divided by the distance between them. Now again, in this case, the charges are both positive Q, so we can substitute positive Q in for Q1 as well as Q2, and then the distance between them is 0.33, so we can fill that in. And then we can simplify it a little bit by noting that Q times Q is Q squared. So this expression right here would represent the initial amount of energy that's present. Again, it's electrical potential energy. But then when that second charge is released and starts moving to the right, some of the potential energy that was initially present will become the kinetic energy of this charge. But at the same time, there will still be electrical potential energy between the two charges because they're still a relatively close distance away from each other. So in other words, we have two forms of energy in the final picture. We have the electrical potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Now electrical potential energy we've already discussed that's going to be equal to kq squared over the distance. This time the distance between the charges is 1.7 plus the kinetic energy which is going to be equal to one half times the mass of this moving particle times its speed squared. Now the conservation of energy allows us to set the final energy equal to the initial energy. So let's do that. And we're trying to solve for Q, so it might be helpful to subtract this term over to the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side, we can fill in the mass of the particle. Notice we have to use kilograms instead of grams, so we're going to have to express that as 0.14 kilograms. And then the speed of that particle is given as 70, so we can plug that in as well. If we'd like to, we can pick up our calculators and simplify the right-hand side. And when we do that, we should get 343. Uh, the left-hand side's a little bit more complicated. Maybe we can factor out a Q squared. We could then pick up our calculators and simplify what's in the brackets here. Remember that K has a value of roughly 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. So we could simplify what's in the brackets. You should get roughly 2.2 times 10 to the 10th. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by that 2.2 times 10 to the 10th. And then we're gonna have to take the square root of that result since we're trying to solve for Q. And when you do that, you should get roughly 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4, and then the standard unit will be in coulombs. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now part B is very similar. We're asked to find the speed when the charge is 45 centimeters away from the stationary charge. So we've changed the distance to 0.45 meters, and now we're actually looking for the speed. But the same concept applies, and that is that the initial electrical potential energy can be set equal to the final electrical potential energy plus the final kinetic energy of that moving particle, which is going to be one half times its mass times its speed squared. Now this time we don't know the speed, but we do know Q. We found that earlier in part A of the questions. And so maybe to solve for V, we can subtract the KQ squared over 0.45 term over to the left hand side. Notice that 1 half times 0.14 is 0.07. You could then divide both sides of the equation by the 0.07. And then finally, you'd have to take the square root of both sides. That might not be the simplest way of solving for it, but you'd have to very carefully plug all that into your calculator in order to solve for V. And when you do that, you should get roughly 40.3 meters per second for the speed. So this will be the correct answer to part B. 
We now move on to part C, which asks us to find the spring constant K. We go back to the initial scenario when the two charges were separated by 33 centimeters and note once again that the initial energy is the electrical potential energy, which we can symbolize as UI. We then go to the final scenario and we were told that the moving charge when it was 45 centimeters away from the stationary charge encounters a spring and compresses that spring by 37 centimeters. Now, if we look at that picture carefully, we can see that the total distance between the charges is going to be the 45 centimeters plus the 37 centimeters, which will give us 82 centimeters. There still is electrical potential energy present between the two charges, but now there's also the elastic potential energy that's stored in the spring. And what we're going to do is set our initial energy equal to those final two forms of energy. So we'll have the final electrical potential energy and then the elastic potential energy stored in the spring, which we can symbolize as US. Why don't we go ahead and actually subtract the UF over to the other side. We can then substitute in for UI the expression KQ squared over the distance, the initial distance being that 33 centimeters, and then UF will be KQ squared over the final distance, which again was 82 centimeters. Also, the spring potential energy is 1 half times KX squared, where X is the distance that the spring compresses. So let's go ahead and set that up. Note that the K on the right side is not the same value of K on the left side. The K on the left side was that standard value of 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. The K on the right side is actually what we're looking for. So actually, why don't we multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by X squared. That's going to allow us to isolate the K. And at this point, we can plug in the known values. Remember that Q was the charge that we had found earlier. It was equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs. And then the X is the distance by which the spring compresses, which was 0.37 meters. And after plugging in those known values, you should get roughly 3,716 newtons per coulomb for the value of K, the spring constant. And that's the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.